So, good morning to all of you. Uh, I just would like to introduce to all of you Dr. Mahesh Jangid. Uh, he is currently working in uh, Manipal University, Jaipur, and he is, uh, you know, associate professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering. And his uh, coordinator of uh, four semester has been. It's, uh, and he's done his PhD in image processing from Manipal University itself. And his uh, B in M Tech and B he's done in 2007 from Rajasthan University. And M Tech from Dr. B R Ambedkar and IIT Jalandhar. And his uh, past past work experiences he's been work, worked in JCRC Jaipur and also Jyoti Vidyapeet Women University Jaipur. And uh, today we have a session on image captioning from uh, sir. So I would like to welcome you, sir, in our session. And it's over to you now, sir. Please. <coughs> Uh, thank, you. thank you very much, uh, Anirji. Yes, sir. And uh, uh, very good uh, morning, all of uh, the participants of this graphical development program. So in the morning, uh, we had very uh, interesting session and a very useful session for us. Uh, being engineer, we all and as a teacher, uh, and today uh, life is also you know, moving stress. So meditation is one of the key uh, you know, important role very different role in our life. So uh, now back to again uh, technology and you know uh, which is you know currently uh, very important uh, nowadays. So today uh, as I hope you are aware that today we are going to discuss a recurrent neural network, uh, one of uh, famous deep learning model and uh, we will let me just share my screen. So, just a few minutes. Okay, so I hope my screen is visible to all of you. No, sir, it is not yet. It's coming. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It is visible now. Visible, sir. Okay, fine. Yeah. So, uh, we are going to discuss today uh, what is a recurrent neural network. And we will use this neural network for multiple application to understand how we can use a neural network for multiple purpose. So uh, we organized uh, this particular session in this manner. First of all, we look at a recurrent neural network. Then <clears throat> we look at LSTM and GRU. And then uh, <clears throat> we'll move to hands-on session. First, we will look at how we can go for prediction and how we can use uh, RNN for the prediction purpose. Then uh, we'll move uh, again to process a natural uh, language uh, and we will go with uh, movie review using RNN. So again, we learn how we can use a recurrent neural network for processing uh, this natural language. And then we move finally in image captioning because image captioning is a very uh, tough task. Uh, first, we need to understand the basic things. Then we can go with image, uh, image captioning because multiple things involved in image captioning. This is uh, our uh, final actually target. So I'm just summarizing what we learned in this uh, session. Let me just connect my I this uh, tag. Okay, fine. So if I interrupt. So uh, our aim is to take image and we need to produce the caption for this image. In between, we are going to use uh, CNN. I hope you understand CNN and, and I also checked the schedule of this FTP. CNN has been covered by some speakers. Then we look at this RN. So this for image captioning purpose, uh, we need to use both the models. Uh, CNN, one of the famous ones, and then RNN together because RNN and we also look at uh, what is the difference between all of them. 
So for that purpose, we uh, we need to understand the RNA. And then we look at how we can go for for natural language processing because finally we need text. We need a sentence. We don't want image in the output, and we don't want to classify it because we need to uh, process a natural language, and we need to produce a sentence. That's why we need to understand how we can go for natural language processing by the help of RNN. And then we look at the image captioning. So first of all, uh, we look at uh, these RNN. Uh, this is a basic diagram. Uh, this is a very famous you know, uh, architecture of any uh, neural network. It's a basic neural network where we have input layer, we have hidden layer, we have output layer. And in hidden layer, we may have multiple in hidden layers, we may have multiple neurons. And this input layer and hidden layer are all connected with each other. And each connection associated with the weight and this weight help us to get some kind of changes into the network. And this weight is important in any kind of a neural network. But when we represent a recurrent neural network, we have both the things like we have input, we have some kind of hidden layers, then we have output. Only the one connection additional, we have some kind of a loop here. So this loop uh, signify this recurrent neural network actually. So this uh, actually uh, this uh, loop tells you that this neuron takes the input from itself. So it's like that it's kind of uh, maybe get confused to you, but it's kind of a past information which has been processed by this neuron used to calculate a new value for the output. Fine. So in such kind of maybe in uh, in neural network in uh, C, uh, like uh, CNN, you never uh, seen such type of connection because there is no way to take uh, previous information to process new information. But in case of recurrent neural network, we have such kind of a arrow that tells you we are taking previous state information or previous process information to produce a new result. Okay, so uh, if I make a simple formula, so in, in case of any kind of a neural network, we have some kind of such kind of structures like we have W and we have a X and some bias maybe. But here, same thing will be happen, but we have some kind of additional, you know, we can say this, uh, we can say previous state, or we can keep it like C here. So this helps you to produce a new information that is depend on your past information as well. Okay, so uh, if we talk about uh, some kind of uh, time series information, like we look at the stock prediction. So in case of stock prediction, we have a lot of information with us for previous months or previous year. And we are going to predict some kind of uh, prediction for a particular stock. So we need to look at the past information and we cannot predict the information without looking at the past information. So this past information play the role and that only done by this recurrent neural network. There is no other way to do it in case of when we use deep learning approaches. Fine, so we go more into it. So first of all, we look at the differences between the recurrent neural network and the CNN. So, we all know, I hope you all know that about CNN. CNN is used for the image classification purpose, object detection purpose. But this RNN is for like prediction, uh, which we, which data is dependent on the times and uh, which you need to uh, look at the previous information and such things. 
So uh, CNN is a feed forward neural network, but and use for less total for image post recognition, object detection. But the INN works for principle of saving the output of layer. Saving the output of layer means you have a way to store the output of layer and which helps you to produce a new information. And the feeding this back to the input. So uh, this is the main difference, uh, which you can also observe by the help of structure of these two models. Further, uh, this uh, CNN considers only the current input, as I told you, and this RNN considers the current input and also the previous received input. So in case of uh, recurrent neural network, we have a way to memorize the, in the previous process information. Fine. So uh, we have internal memory in case of RNN, but we don't have any kind of internal memory in CNN. And in CNN, basically, we have a, you know, uh, four uh, you know, feed uh, layers. Like continuously, we have forward layers like convolution layer, dilute layer, pulling layer, and fully connected layer. Such kind of layers not available in case of RNN. There are multiple applications for RNN, like prediction, language modeling, machine translation, speech visualization, uh, generating images, video tagging, text visualization, uh, call center analysis, where the information is dependent on the time, face detection. And other applications like uh, music composition and many things. So uh, there are multiple applications where the RNN can be used. Apart from that, uh, the RNN have a different type of uh, applications where you can use, and there are different type of models for that purpose. So uh, it may be one to many, many to one many to many and many to many there are two variations so first of all look at the one to many model so in one to many we can see here uh, we have only one information and we are getting multiple information so our task like image captioning is actually comes into the one to many so here we will feed one image and we are getting multiple words. Am I audible? Hello, energy, am I audible? Yes, sir, yes. Yes, sir. Okay, fine, fine, fine. So, uh, as I told you that uh, in one to many, uh, we have one input and we are getting multiple outputs. So, in case of image captioning, we are only feeding one image and we are getting multiple words, and that word becomes a sentence. That is a different case, but it will consider here as a one to many. Next model is many to one. In that case, we are getting multiple input and we are getting one output. So uh, as I told you, we will also look at the movie review. So in case of movie review, in movie review, we are getting a sentence. And we are need to find sentiments, whether it is good or bad. Fine. So uh, this will be in a many to one. Next is many to many. So in that case, we will have multiple inputs and we will get multiple outputs. So uh, in language translation, like Hindi to English or in English to Hindi, we are getting multiple words and we are getting multiple words in the output as well. So when you convert English to Hindi, and the number of words may be different because it will depend on the languages. So in that case, that will be many to one, many to many. 
and the number of inputs and number of outputs will not depend it will not be same but in case of when the number of inputs and number of outputs is same maybe m and maybe n maybe m both the m here you can say if these are n and these are m and m is not equal to n so m and n may be different maybe m may be greater than n or n may be greater than m that may be possible so in this case uh, here we are having a same inputs number of inputs are same and number of outputs are also same like in that case uh, when we uh, look at the uh, finding uh, some kind of uh, like we have video video have multiple images into it and you need to get some kind of word for each image in that case you are getting m image and you are getting m word for each image so in that case you can say we will follow many to many with m to n okay so i hope it is clear so we first of all we look at which type of model we need to follow and which type of model is suit our problem now again look at uh, the anand model we so far we have seen this diagram and this is very summarized diagram of rnn where we can understand that we are get we are getting input we are getting output and this output is depend on whatever the processing happen here and whatever things comes from the past information fine but this is not like that it, when we go to expand it it is like that so uh, each this uh, uh neuron will get feed from different different so actually this actually happen as a multiple time so as a new time and uh, dependent things happen in rnn so this happen at time 0 this happen as time 2 and this happen so it is time time 1 and this happen as time 2 so what, what do you mean by this so it's telling you this in a network uh, getting some kind of input and initially it will be zero because initially we don't have any kind of feedback so initially it will be zero and later on it will be going to two like next time it may be 0.2 and which is fit to the next uh, network at different time next time again you can make it some changes and you feed this a uh, value to complete network so this things happen like this okay so uh, it look like you know uh, you are getting a same thing again here there is no meaning at all but it is not like that you uh, feeding this information to complete network so your network completely produce some kind of new information from the past information i hope it is clear to you so uh, i told you same thing in previous tech class uh, previous slide so now uh, we will get more uh, uh, deeper into this unit actually which is only uh, look at this unit okay uh, one minute i, I have uh, some uh, issue here just a minute Okay, sorry for interrupt. Oh, fine. Okay, so uh, now, so far we have seen uh, the structure of uh, the ten neural network, and we understand that this uh, feed is towards the all the network, and that help us to produce a new information. Now look at this uh, neuron. Uh, what actually we have into this? So uh, it we have uh, two type of uh, Uh, neurons here like LSTM and uh, GRU. 
okay we will go to that later but only just to uh, tell you how you know uh, things will be inside it so here you can see uh, we have such kind of a structure inside this like old state gate new state and gate and output so you can see uh, normally what happen uh, normally what happen uh, we have input and then input uh, will give you you know uh, output with the weight but here you can see uh, input is not going directly going with the weight you have a multiple things to produce output like old state so these are some gates which perform some kind of operation with them so this only tells you uh, we have some kind of internal structure in this neuron and that uh, tells uh, give you the old state and any past information and it will produce new information which will be used for further processing fine now uh, this uh, we can expand more here so suppose uh, we took uh, the example of a movie review and in that case you can see uh, maybe somebody review the movie like this is not a good uh, this is not a very good movie okay and finally you will get some kind of a positive or negative sentiment for a particular review so uh, you have multiple you know are you uh, we call it recurrent and here you can understand why we call it recurrent okay so the meaning of recurrent here is you have a recurrent neurons or kind of a processing unit at multiple level so this unit and this unit and this unit all are recurrent so you have multiple units okay so that's how we call it recurrent so the internal structure of this neuron uh, this uh, recurrent unit is same but processing will be different because processing will be depend on the previous input and the input actually will provide like a okay so output will be different but the structure of this all the uh, recurrent units will be same that's why we call it recurrent okay so uh, i hope uh, uh, you have some kind of little experience of how to process uh, review review if you look at the words like uh, if you say if you find like very good okay so if i say if i find very good then what i need to say because uh, when we go to analyze some kind of sentences i can only go with the words okay so here you can see if i look at very good i will say is a positive review but when you read out the complete sentence this is not this sentence is actually give you negative review so you can see this is not this not you know changed this the meaning of these two words so if you look at individually very good you say it's a positive review but when you look at not that suppresses the you know positivity of this words fine so anyhow we can understand here we cannot go directly on the words we cannot look at the words what words we have in the review we need to understand the complete words and uh, there is a dependency a strong dependency between them so this not play very important role here and you can see this not the output of this new ru recurrent unit is moving from here to here to here okay and this not play the role here and it will suppress the meaning of these two words if there is no not then there will be a strong contribution of this very good in the output but due to this not the contribution of this these two words will be negligible here then you will get a cut output otherwise you will not able to get cut output so this feed you know feed system and you can say uh, uh, you know uh, the 
uh, information which is coming from multiple hurricane units helps us to go with the particular uh, result okay so in that case this not play very important role here and it will strongly pass some kind of information how you can keep it like zero because zero if we take zero is fine if it pass zero it make everything zero because something is going to multiply here and something is going to make it zero and if you don't have a not here or maybe you may find this is this no not or something like uh, you can say anything like uh, you can take any x uh, that will give you a positive review or maybe a uh, note is not there okay so in that case uh, this uh, value will be give a uh, good uh, kind of a feedback and then resultant also will be positive okay so i hope you understand that uh, the when we process natural languages and kind of such kind of where the things are dependent on the previous information in that case this neural network works perfectly otherwise if you look at only the words then we cannot conclude anything fine so i hope it is clear to you anybody have any any question here you can ask me now okay so i think it's fine so uh, here we only have one uh, layer of uh, this recurrent units but we may have multiple layers and as i told you initially you will get you know zero here because there is no no uh, recurrent unit before that so initially we will feed zero for everywhere and later on you will get some kind of computed value with you and then you can adjust the value as per your output because while training we get everything so basically uh, you can understand one more thing here so in in case of any neural network it may be a neural network simple artificial neural network it may be cnn it may be rnn whenever we have error we have weight associated with that because this weight plays a important role because in case of uh, any neural network what we have actually we need to adjust the weights so that we are able to convert the input into output so the weights are important the same way when we are getting one more arrow which is actually uh, feedback kind of uh, so this is also associated with the one more weight okay so anyhow we need to also find this uh, weight so if we say this is weight 1 and this is weight 2 so also this have a value with the weight fine so we don't know we don't know that uh, which uh, feedback what feedback will help us to you know, tune our output by the help of training that will be happen automatically by the network so yeah up to that i hope it is fine it is clear to you most of you uh, if you have any doubt you can ask me any time no issue we can spend some time and it whenever you have a query this is a positive side uh, we understand uh, this is structure and all now look at negative side so there is a big problem occurs in recurrent uh, neural network that is called gaudian vanishing problem okay so what actually it is so as i told you that uh, all the role or main important uh, things in case of any kind of network is weight okay and you can see uh, we are feeding uh, one more weight everywhere you can see everywhere we are feeding weight for multiple time fine and when uh, we go to you know calculate uh, or when we go to train this a network and we follow the back propagation same thing happen we again need to calculate the weight okay so uh, let me move into the equation so that you can understand the things in a proper way so uh, what happen 
when we calculate and first of all we look at this diagram because this diagram uh, tells you many things so uh, this is one of the uh, recurrent unit so here you can see uh, this is a pass information so you are putting pass information you are getting some uh, input here okay and this uh, input also have a weight okay so you can see uh, this is your input this is the weight with the input then again you also multiply or uh, summation here yeah this is summation actually summation here and you are getting the previous state information so this t minus 1 tells you the previous state formation and the weight associated with that okay so I hope this uh, is clear to you and we need to you know uh, find some kind of a changes into that okay so when you go to process and when you come up uh, in this equation so you can see uh, a weight which is uh, we are feeding here and everywhere will multiply with the processing whatever happen here okay when you go uh, in multiple uh, times when you go in multiple times what happen multiple time the weight is going to multiply with this so what happen actually as you all know that uh, the neural network works uh, you know values from minus 1 to 1 in the range of this okay so it's uh, always uh, works in decimal values so when you multiply some kind of decimal value multiple times with decimal value so when multiply then value will be going down if the values are in the point level if your weight which is multiplied with this is it below the zero or sorry below the one then when you multiply with the values the value will go down again let's say if you are multiplying this 0 0.2 again 0 0.1 then again the value is going to decrease so when you because this is uh, you know multiple time happens this thing because we are fitting this uh, w uh, for multiple calculation so in that case it is going down so this is called vanishing so your weight is going to or the output is going to vanish and sometimes it's become very very small so in that case when it become very, very small then there is no role of this w okay and sometimes the output of that particular recurrent unit and if there is no role, then there is no meaning of having such kind of thickened units. So, so the vanishing problems is that that you are you know uh, multiplying uh, the weights with multiple uh, layer at multiple time, and the value of these recurrent units is going very very small, and then this is a role of that particular thickened unit. Okay, so uh, this is called vanishing problem. So if the value of this W is small, then we call it vanishing. If the value of W is large, then it's called exploding. So the meaning of this is if uh, we take the value of this W R E C, uh, if uh, like point two. Then multiply 0.2, something like that, maybe 0.2, or we can keep it like 0.1 and whatever it is. So it means that when you multiply it multiple times, like 0.1, this gives you 0.2. Then again, you multiply this 0.2 to uh, 0.2, and then again, it's going to decrease like this. And if we take uh, this uh, W value, like point. Uh, 1.2 then in that case what happened 1.2 multiply by 0.1 okay so uh, if the values of this also uh, you know blow the one 
or maybe make it like two. So in that case, it's give you 2.4. Then you multiply with two, then it's give you 4.8. So if we choose this W, uh, blue or well, higher than one, or maybe one, two, three, four, like that. So in that case, in multiply multiple time, value is going to become very large. Okay. So in that case, we call it exploding. So when the value is become very high, suppose. So when you multiply here, 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 when you multiply here third time, so the role of this uh, can unit becomes high as compared to others. Suppose others are producing 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.7, and 0.8, and this uh, can unit is producing 12. So there is a huge gap. And in that case, there is no role of having the second units here. Okay. So in that case also, there will be issue. This is called exploiting. So these two type of issues are happening in this uh, second uh, network because this is not happening in the uh, CNN because there is no like uh, multiple weights are multiplying at uh, multiple level. But here happens. Okay, so in that case, this may be issues. So for that, uh, already you know things has done by the multiple researchers. So uh, they use a 10 h function that help us to keep the values in the range. Fine. So we also look at that. So let me take you small animation and a website where you can also. I look at all the state this. So I hope my screen is visible to you. My browser is visible to you. Yes, sir. Okay. So now uh, I'm just going to uh, tell you that uh, how this uh, exploding and this vanishing problems is going to tackle care of this uh, recurrent uh, network. So look at this uh, animation. So here you can see uh, you know, information passing and information changing. So this is exploding. So you can see here I passed here five, and after some time, multiply multiple time, it's become 135. Okay. So one of the weight becomes 135, and others becomes a very small 0.3 like that. Okay. But in case of uh, now, we used this 10h function here. So now you can see this 10h function always keep the output of any recurrent unit within the range of minus 1 to 1. So now look at it. So again, I'm passing 5 and it's converted to 1 and converted to 0.99 and converted into 0.99 like this okay but here things are moving very fast or there is a big huge difference between these two values so uh, this 10h function play the role and it always keep the information between the 1 to minus 1 okay i hope it is clear to you so by this uh, we can you know resolve the problem of exploding in this vanishing and which is already uh, you know available in LSTM and GRU, but we need to understand why we have such kind of function there. Anybody have any doubt up to this point? Okay, fine. So let me take you again in PPT. Now we understand uh, this uh, recurrent uh, network RNN. Here we have two choices. You can use <coughs> LSTM as a recurrent unit, and you can also use GRU as a recurrent unit. You have two choices. We will also look at the differences. So one by one, we can go. So the basic difference, uh, first of all, is it is, it is uh, no internal structure of these two units are actually different. So this is LSTM, and this is GRU. So you can see the internal structure of both the uh, recurrent uh, cells are different. 
but uh, uh, if you look at the problem wise then we cannot say which will give you best result so lstm was founded in 97 and then this jru was actually found in i think in 14 so the jru is latest one and definitely if it is latest one then it's give you better performance so uh, if we talk about the performance wise so jru is faster enough than lstm but uh, we cannot conclude it uh, that lstm lstm is not useful because that is depend on the application whether uh, this lstm works for you better than gru uh, no one knows about it so still lstm and this gru both are using but if you took about the speed you need a uh, speed then you can go with gru by default because lstm is very slow and also you can observe that there are multiple uh, functions available in lstm that's why they need time to compute it and here you can see there are less functions available so definitely it will go faster so yeah so uh, about history so as i told you that lstm was founded by this uh orides in 97 and then this uh, gru was founded in the test in 2014 by this kugen so so uh this lstm you know works and uh, the stand for the long a uh, long term dependency uh, problems also because uh, this is actually a uh, long and short term memory the full form of lstm is so uh, sometime uh, as i told you we took the example of this movie review where the note was very important okay same thing uh, when we look at the uh, language translation in that case also the previous information is very very important okay so uh, apart from that also you can observe uh, sometime when you go to google and you type something then it automatically give you some kind of a prediction so how the google understand what type of information you are looking for okay so it's depend on what you typed there okay so suppose uh, let's say you are going to type like uh, a chair so definitely you are looking at chair to buy or something like that or uh, let's say you write uh, i want to um, you know buy so if you type i want to buy then definitely you make buy some kind of uh, uh, clothes and like that so uh, the meaning is the past information plays an important role okay so here also you can observe uh, in the sentences so when you type uh, sentence like the clouds are in the so when you type this automatically uh, this sky what maybe you get there or sky is possible word because you are talking about cloud and when then you can look at the sky so such kind of uh, things is are important so in that case long and long term you know this is a long term dependency or short term dependencies happen so lstm works fine for that also in same way this sentence also uh, help you to understand the concept so like i grown up in france and i speak fluent french so definitely if you grown up there and definitely will uh, you know speak french at least uh, fluent maybe english also but yeah the most possible case is french so these are the examples tells you you know what is the importance of such kind of lstm and uh, this uh, G, uh, this and and to use in our application so that part i also covered uh, this tenh function so the architecture of lstm uh, i already show you but we can go uh, more deeper into that so uh, in this uh, lstm or gru they have a, a complete different type of structure and uh, i hope you observed this uh, uh, neurons there in cnn or in uh, any kind of uh, artificial neural network same way you can see this is a kind of a neuron and this neuron have multiple subunits into it 
okay so that's why we cannot say this is a neuron we can say they can unit and which have multiple neurons into it because when we uh, say neuron so neuron is kind of uh, a point where you uh, perform some kind of a multiplication and summation like you have a input you have weight and then you produce some kind of output so here you can see you have multiple uh, places there you can uh, go uh, to perform some kind of a calculation fine so uh, here you can see uh, this uh, sigma is a kind of a uh, produce some kind of output which will be from 0 to 1 and so where we are using 10h function so this uh, sigma may be sine function okay or something else so uh, here that value will be into range of 0 to 1 and then here the you can use this 10h function it will keep you value in minus 1 to plus 1 So uh, here you can see uh, this uh, particular node will decide what to forget and what to remember actually. So when you get some kind of feedback and this uh, unit will save the information because it's already have memory and it's already has some kind of information with it. Okay, so what to keep and what to forget that will be decided by this you know uh, uh, function so it's multiplication type of function and this next this this is plus sign and this is multiplication sign so observe this all multiplication means if you put zero here then whatever you are getting it becomes zero and if you put zero here and if you're getting something x then it will it will be x here so there is a big difference between this plus and this multiplication sign. So here you decide what to insert. What to insert means definitely you pass some kind of x1 here and you have already x2 here. So you're going to add a bit. So this will decide what to insert. And here you combine with transform, transform xt. So you know, after computing all these things and this t xt at a time we will you know combine all these things and transform in new xt because it will be after processing so uh, this uh, you know function is not so complex they are again very simple like a neuron okay so things still remain same here uh, when you talk about the calculation part only the multiplication you know, multiplications and addition and some kind of function applied only these three major functions will be happen still here okay so uh, this you know uh, slide tells you different different uh, the equations for different different uh, components of this lstm so here you can see uh, this this part uh, of it will be calculated in this manner so you are getting uh, the if it is the time is t then you will take the hidden layer output of previous state multiply with x3 and then multiply a new weight of time t plus bias so this is a kind of a neuron here so this is one of one of the neuron which will be inside this lstm this is bias this is weight and this is function whether it is sigmoid whatever you want to use and then there will be one more change that we are getting some kind of a previous information that, that was absent in CNN or NN. Okay. Then further, this city will go to calculate. 
So uh, this is only a 10 bit function. So whatever calculations happen uh, with that. So again, you are getting uh, this linking here. So this information is moving here and then bias and new weight for this neuron and then you're applying NH function here. Okay, so it's a very simple calculation happening at multiple places. So we have so far seen this and further you can also observe uh, how to calculate this CT value. So you can you know understand properly like whatever the FT will come here, then previous state information and then this IT and CT value will multiply and you will add up with the this value. This decide what to remember as I told you and what to forget. Okay. Fine. So this uh, <coughs> slides <coughs> show every calculation at multiple places. And so I'm skipping all the things because these are simple equation. Now we look at uh, uh, you know uh, GRU. So we look at uh, you know um, this LSTM and understand the concept. The same concept is also applied here, but you can also observe here the internal structure of this recurrent unit is different, and that's only the difference. Otherwise, same thing will be here. Okay, so you are putting input, you are getting output. This is output, this is input, this is the output which fit to the next uh, unit and which is you know input which you received from previous recurrent unit. Okay, so I hope this is clear to you. And if I make a simple diagram, then you can also observe this what we have. Seeing that time, we have A and then we have multiple A output and things will be like this. Okay, so this is HT minus one and this you can observe HT and this is the Y and this is X and this part of this is H. So uh, as I told you, there is uh, no bit, uh, you know, uh, or criteria to decide what whether we should go with LSTM or whether we should go with GRU. But uh, if you want to you know test your work with the RNN and uh, when you start it, then we can start with the uh, GRU because GRU is faster and then you can observe easily whether you are getting uh, good performance by the help of RNN or not. If you're getting good performance with RNN and uh, this uh, RNN and with uh, this GRU then also you can try LSTM and might be you get better accuracy. So that is depend on some, only the experiment. Now uh, this is the time to take a very simple example and now uh, we are taking a very simple example Google stock price prediction. Okay and so that we can able to understand how we can use um, RNN and what type of things we need to set up. Okay, so before that, uh, let me just show you uh, what we have as an input with us. So uh, here uh, we have uh, two data with us. As normally we have a train data, we have test data. Let me show you what we have in training. Okay, so uh, these are the Google stock price of uh, these years. Okay, so I said there is no meaning for us, but we just only take this only to do our experiment. So here you can see uh, in each day, normally at, at the end of the day, the stock prices are in you know what in what price it was open, uh, what price it was you know 
moved up to high and low and close value. Okay, so we may get four different values, but uh, we will not go with all such kind of values. We only take one value. Okay, maybe open, maybe high, maybe low. And as per that, we can predict open value or high value and low value. Okay, so we can extract only one information from this Excel sheet, and I'll also tell you how we can go about that. Fine. So you can see here uh, we have around uh, 1260 uh, or 59 lines. Okay, so we skip uh, this header, then we have 1258 uh, values with us. So this is uh, the training through which we'll train our model. And again, I have already uh, one Excel file. Here I have actual values of particular year, uh, particular time frame. So I have 20 values with me and uh, we will compare we will first of all train our model with the airport training and we will try to predict it and then we will compare the predicted value and the actual value and we plot a graph and we look at whether we are getting uh, some kind of uh, good information from the training or not okay so this is about the data set now let me take you the code okay so uh, i hope you all are aware about that because uh, the google collab is one of the um, good platform where you can you know test your deep learning models easily there's no need to set up anything and i hope you uh, done some kind of experiment with that so uh, so first of all, you uh, need to upload uh, your particular data set here. So uh, right now I'm not going to do that because it will take little time and it will do that. So we can just you know take these files from your folder and we will share the folder with you. So don't worry about it. And then paste here so that this uh, uh, code able to next get this Excel sheet and then able to acquire the values okay so uh, yeah so this is the way uh, we use uh, this uh, pandas library it's a very famous one to read the csv file and then we are only taking the first two this uh, first column which value which i told you we will only look at the open values okay we will not take everything you only take open or you can try with high and low so we are only going to predict open uh, value of a stock okay so it's simple we will extract it and it is fine now the one of important thing is here you can see uh, the values are uh, in a different range you can say now values are you know uh, these are value as uh, 700 before that was 300 okay so uh, we need to scale down and we need to keep a particular skill in which we want value and as i already told you that whenever we process any kind of information in any kind of uh, neural network values will be in the range of 0 to 1 or minus 1 to 1 range always so we will down, uh, you know, uh, use uh, mean max scalar function which is already built in uh, sqlr library of uh, python so you just need to put your data into that and it will automatically uh, scale up into this range 0 to 1. So you can specify your range. So that's up to you. Now the next thing is uh, we have uh, data in this manner. We have data. Let me just uh, open that training so that we can get a clear idea. Okay, so here you can see we have a value with us and these values are continuously. But when we pass these values, we uh, you know make sequential uh, uh, information like this. 
like one, two, three, and four. So uh, here, first of all, we need to decide in what range or what period of time we need to consider. Okay, and that is one of the free parameter in uh, you can say RNN, and when we prepare our data set. Okay, so uh, here like this, like if I take four. So let's say I take only four values, and again I will set my next values like this. So I have a value with me one, two, three, four, five, six, and I take period of four. So the, I will keep first value up to four, and then second value start from that next four, then next four, like third value, four, three. And six. In that manner, I need to arrange my data so that I can feed this value as a sample. A sample, then this is next sample. This is my third sample. So I need to make my sam data samples. One, this is two, and this is three. So that do I need to do? Okay. I hope it is clear to you. So first of all, I need to decide time frame. And then, according to that, I need to produce uh, one-dimensional information in two-dimensional. Okay. Okay. So that job is done here. So I uh, I will take sixty uh, value. My range is sixty, and I will take first sixty value as in my first training sample. Then I will take second value to sixty. One value as second sample. So this particular function will do that thing, and this function will convert my one-dimensional data into two-dimensional data. And each row will represent one sample. Okay. And the last value will be the prediction. Like if we take this. Here, so this is my period, and this will be my y value. Y means label, and this is my x value. So the prediction will be five because I picked four values, and prediction should be five. And likewise, I will take this three value, and prediction will be six. Next value. Okay. So in that manner, I will prepare the x train and y train. I hope you uh, are aware about the CNN. Also, we need to have two type of data with us. One will have a data in two dimension, maybe three dimension in case of uh, CNN. If otherwise, it will be two dimension. And one Y, which tells you the label. So when we have classification problem, label may be zero, one, two, three. That is depend on how many classes you have. But here we have a prediction problem. So here uh, the actual value will be our required y value. Okay, then we need to reshape our data set. Then now simply we need to make our model. And this is a very simple step here. So if you uh, run with the CNN, same things you can also go with that. So we need to go with sequential model. And then that's why we need to call the sequential function. And then just we need to add up multiple layers. So here I'm adding LSTM layer. In LSTM layer, I am defining how many different LSTM and the kind of units you want in this first layer. So I want 50. Then my written sequential will be true. And this is input uh, data shape. Then I also added uh, this uh, dropout, and I hope you are aware about it. So dropout is one of uh, the way to you know overcome uh, the overfitting issue. And dropout is a very common function in deep learning models. You can also use this drop dropout in CNN as well. Okay, so I am using that also. Then I again added one more layer of LSTM. With 50 units, and then again one more LSTM unit with 50 units, 
and finally i again added this output layer here uh, this dense layer so you can also you know delete and remove whatever you want just only for experiment uh, illustration purpose so at the end what i want i want one a prediction value so this last dense layer will only have one so you can observe there is no flatten layer okay because uh, if you are aware about cnn then remember this uh, we have a convolution layer and all but we don't have here any flatten layer because here prediction is going on then you need to set the optimizer and all so optimizer is remain same same optimizer you use in that uh, CNN that also you can use here. So the choice for the uh, optimizer is same. Then you can start fitting it and you can fix it whatever up to that level you can fit it. So it will be go and it will going to train it. So this part was about training. Now uh, we look at how to go to predict and how to visualize the uh, prediction. So here I need to read now my test file. And then I do something. Let me just keep it. It's a simple thing. And now I'm drawing here. So this uh, red one is actually the uh, real stock price. And this is actually the predicted value. Okay, so you know the prediction is a very tough task for the stroke because the stroke predictions you know depend on multiple things you know sentiments and COVID and all situations, but still you can see uh, we are moving in little same direction. So here you can see that part is covering the same thing. And here it tells you the stroke is going too high, and still it is going to little high, and here you can see high forming high. Okay, so you can try with different models. There's no issue as such. Fine. So I hope it is clear to you how to use uh, this uh, CNN and uh, this RNN for stock prediction or you can see for the prediction purpose. Okay, so we will share this code with you. Uh, there's no issue for that. So this is our first example uh, that tells you how you can use RNN. Now, uh, our next example is uh, movie review. So, that is going to be little tough as compared to this uh, uh, prediction uh, of a stock. So, uh, I uh, used IMDB dataset, and I hope you are aware about IMDB uh, that give you uh, dataset uh, for movie and uh, which have around 24,000 of uh, review for a particular movie. So we set up uh, this experiment with this asset. And here, uh, we just need to do what we need to do. We have a um, words with us or paragraph with us. Like, I love this movie, so that will be positive. And then this movie is bad, then we need to say negative sentiment. OK, so anyhow, we need to process this complete uh, sentence. OK. And then we need to produce the result. Result in the classification, like whether it is positive or it is negative. So that that we need to do. So uh, this uh, actually is a problem of uh, natural language processing. So uh, just we go with the natural language processing. So uh, because um, here we have a, a language with us, and uh, you know, um, neural network will not work any kind of words with. OK, the neural network only work with the numbers. OK, remember these things. So whatever you have doesn't matter whether you have an image, whether you have any kind of any kind of words with you, you need to feed words of numbers in only neural network. So anyhow, we need to do some kind of mechanism through which we can convert our sentences, our words into numbers and then only that number will taken by the neural network to process. So I can skip all these things. So it's a pretty simple uh, thing. So here you can understand uh, where is the actual natural language strength. So uh, we have complete AI. And this AI, uh, we have machine learning. 
So for machine learning, we have multiple tools with us. Like we have, uh, like we have SVN, like we have a KNN, we have a uh, random forest, many things we have with us to do machine learning. And of this part of machine learning includes this deep learning. So in deep learning, we have a CNN, we have a RNN, we have a GAN, and we have a cycle gen, well, multiple things, uh, multiple networks, you know, available today uh, uh, online, like uh, AlexNet, uh, this Google Net, and Microsoft RSNet. So multiple deep learning models with us. And then this natural language processing, you know, cover uh, that part of it. So, uh, you know, don't we, we, we can use GDL, you know, deep learning model, we don't use. Also, we can process natural language processing in a different way. So, <coughs> here uh, we look at how we can process natural language processing by the help of deep learning. Okay, so natural language uh, processing means something uh, if you have, then we can, you know, produce multiple things. Okay. So like this is one of uh, the uh, tweet uh, on uh, Twitter, and then you can see we can you know get multiple things like emotions, like tone, like organization, like product, like you know adjectives and language. So you can see a very small paragraph give you a lot of information. Okay, so natural language processing is very very important today, and. These are the you know, applications of uh, natural language processing. So let me just skip it. So, yeah. so here uh, one comparison between the deep learning model and the uh, traditional uh, way to process it. So tra traditionally, uh, you know, uh, we have a language detection and kind of and then we properly process it and then we do some modeling we extract features and all, all, all such kind of things and then we need to uh, you know have multiple models for multiple purpose fine so such kind of you know traditional happens there but in case of deep learning just you have document and then pre process it and then feed to the network and let the network decide what feature it want, what type of preprocessing it want to do with that, and everything done by the deep learning models, and then you will get your output. So very, very convenient way to process it. So uh, now uh, this is the flow diagram, how we can uh, process this uh, movie review. So suppose uh, you have a review like this is not a good movie, fine. Then, as I told you earlier, any network will not go with these words. It need numbers. So we need to do tokenizer. So what it do? What it does actually? It does. Uh, it convert these uh, words into the numbers. And how? For that, it you know uh, take a, it make a vocabulary, and then it uh, assign a number to that particular word like this have a number 11 is is have a number six so it's you know giving uh when will give a number to each word and whenever uh, the word present into the sentence then it will convert into a vector of integer okay after that it is fine now you converted your words into the numbers but still they are not uh, you know as uniform values because sometimes this value may be thousand and sometimes this value may be one because they are indexes so how they play the role because there is a big difference between these values okay so we need to go with similarity and we need to do some kind of embedding and this embedding task will convert this integer tokens into real valued vector. Okay, so each this uh, integer will convert into a vector. 
and this all vectored value will be in the range of 0 to 1. So there is no difference at all. And you can see the difference. Here the value, one value is 1 and another value is 1000. So there is a big difference. But sometimes if you value have a, like this, and sometimes you value 5.2, 5.2 or 5.7 like this. So there is no difference at all. So this embedding will do that job. Then we apply this recurrent neural network and do some kind of sigmoid function all, and then we predict the positive negative sentiments. So let me take you the code. Okay, so. Uh, so this um, um, movie review actually used this uh, uh, GRU. As I told you, GRU is faster than LSTM. So uh, we will use this uh, uh, GRU. So let me take you, this is only theoretical part of it. So here uh, we are going to use this GRU. So you just need to import them. And in Keras, it's uh, very simple to do that. Here I am uh, uh, loading the IMDB dataset. Okay. So for that, uh, I already uh, have some kind of a file to load the dataset from a particular source. So, uh, same thing you need to again do. Yeah, so uh, you will get a folder. Here you have two files download an imdp which you need to you know put here and then you can start this code to run okay fine so yeah so there are multiple problems when we process uh, you know um, the um, reviews for the movie the first problem is maybe uh, somebody is review somebody may give you a review this is a good movie. Okay. Sometime somebody say good. Sometime somebody write a lot of information. And in that case, sometimes it's very big. Okay. But now, but uh, in case of uh, when we, you know, processed uh, any kind of uh, information uh, with the any kind of uh, network, we need a uniformity. Okay. So there are multiple challenges. One by one, I will tell you and the solution as well. Okay, so please look at carefully. So uh, this is the one. So uh, we already, you know, um, when you go to run this code, this code will automatically download the IMDB dataset and also uh, it will you know, classify them in training and testing. So there is no job of doing that. Fine. So when you start this code, it will automatically download all such kind of information for you. Fine. So uh, this uh, IMDB data set have a 25,000 training samples and 25,000 testing samples. So very big. Fine. So uh, this is one of the sample of uh, movie review. You can see it's a very, very big. OK. So this is sample and this is the label of this uh, review. So this is X train, this is Y train. So one means it's positive. Yeah, sorry. Uh, one is positive and this zero is negative. So it's a positive review. Now, uh, as I told you here in the presentation, we need to do tokenizer. We need to convert these words into numbers. So for that, uh, we need to use tokenizer, uh, you know, function which is already built in this uh, keras. You just need to, you know, run it. So this, uh, you just need to do that. Okay. So uh, here you can see uh, when you apply this, you know, tokenizer. Fine. Okay, so uh, one more thing I need to skip, uh, I skip here. So how this tokenizer will get what type of words you have. Okay, so for that, what we need to do, we need to adapt this to training and test sample. 
so what what we have what words we have in the review so uh, testing sample and training sample add up and we got them in data test so data test is having all the reviews okay and from there we need to extract what different unique words you have and then tokenizer will give them number okay <clears throat> So here, uh, let me go down. You can see now. So we just uh, show you uh, for your testing purpose. Like keeps getting nine nine four three number, and likewise every number, every word will get a number. And how you get this word from your training and testing re uh, reviews? Okay. So that job is done by the tokenizer function automatically. <clears throat> For that, there is no need to do anything. Fine. <clears throat> now this again, uh, we showing uh, this uh, you know um, uh, sample. So uh, we also have a function uh, to you know convert this text into the numbers. So this is the text uh, words you have. And this, uh, uh, no, what we converted into the numbers. Okay, so now your uh, we will review paragraph is converted into integers. Now next, what do we need to do? We need to do embedding. Okay, but before that, before that, then as I told you, maybe the sentences which we have may be very long. Maybe some uh, review, maybe of 10 lines, uh, maybe 10 words, maybe some review of 100 words. So there's a big issue. So for that, we need to do padding and trun truncating. Means if, you, if the sentence is small, then you need to you know, add something before that. Or sentence is big, then you can skip something from there. Okay. And the there will be a one more question will arise here. So suppose you have a we need to find suitable length okay because we don't know what is the length so for that we need to do some kind of a computation how i can go for that so here you can see what i can do i need to observe my data okay and i need to observe what is the you know length of maximum um, samples okay for that what i need to do i need to find a mean mean value so you can see uh, two two one. So uh, my uh, data set have uh, two two one um, words on an average. Okay, fine. And the maximum also observed. I observed maximum. So I observed first of all the mean 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 length of uh, the uh, reviews and the maximum length. You can see the maximum length of a review is. 2208 words, very, very low. Okay, so we need to you know move at a particular um, length, and that length also have some logic into it. You cannot you know, go randomly, otherwise, you will stuck in a big problem. Because if you know uh, length variation is from you know 100 to 2000, what will you will choose? Uh, in, in, in what ground? So for that we can you know use uh, uh, you know uh, shared deviation function and we can calculate a particular value. Okay, so uh, we can use this shared deviation function and we can come up with the 544. So the 544 is the uh, value which should be taken for the for, uh, for the purpose. Okay. So if uh, a sentence which is below the 544, 544, we need to padding something. If a sentence which is beyond the 544, we need to truncate it. We need to skip the content from there. And now I need to observe what type, how much percentage of 544 uh, covers my data set. Okay, 
so it's cover almost 95% so my 95% samples of movie review are in the range of 544 maybe below that or up to that fine so i think it's reasonable length so uh, one more thing so suppose uh, we decided to go with uh, 544 suppose uh, you have a movie review of 300 lines then it is not up to 544 so we need to add some zeros some blanks there so where i need to add before that after that okay so uh, the, the solution is we will add padding before that why because always the last information is important suppose let's i'm writing the view uh, if i my review length is so high so i will write something like what movie movie this movie have this particular hero heroines and producer and all kind of such kind of information and i will write history i will conclude always at the end maybe this is not a scenario for everything everyone but might be it will be for maximum persons so conclusion will be at the end that's why we will add padding in the beginning and we will keep the important thing at the last so in the same way if we have a review of length of 1000 and we need to have it 544 so we will skip the initial part so we will keep end part of that review because that might be possibly have the conclusion fine so that's why we using pre pre padding okay so you can go with the post padding as well because no one knows which give you best result but uh, as human being we can understand that at the end we may have a conclusion okay so now uh, your size becomes uh, 2500 2000 uh, 25000 by 544 okay now it's looked like this and uh, like if this is sentence then you add pad then it will be looked like this so initially you will add some zeros and at the end you have some kind of a meaningful review okay now um, actually this uh, function is to get you know reverse uh, mapping uh, when you have um, let's say number with you and you want to get the words Num again, you want to convert into the words. So that's why these functions, uh, you know, created here to convert numbers into words. Like we have done words into numbers. Now at the end, we need to convert words into uh, numbers into words again. Okay, fine. So now uh, our data set is ready, and then everything is ready. Okay, fine. so again you can see uh, this model is uh, in the same way we can make it i added a redo layer here and dense layer and again some optimization all and you can fill it like this okay so finally uh, you will get some kind of a review with you is positive or negative so you can try this and you can easily do that okay so because we have limited time now we need to take a next experiment so now we learn how we can use rnn for uh, you know predictions of uh, like stocks and how we can you know use this rnn for language processing okay because now our next uh, concern is image captioning now in image cache captioning uh, we have a two parts first of all we need to take image and we need to extract features from the image for that we will use vg16 model and which is a cnn model so we need to use cnn first and then whatever we get from the cnn we will feed to the our language model or that movie review once so uh, 
that we need to do let's see uh, this is the image and we will follow this cnn and then this is our uh, iln which actually uh, process the uh, you know one language to other language actually we you know time for the because we don't have much time so i have one more uh, experiment for you to convert one language to another language so before that we saw how to do movie review this is how we can use this uh, cnn to convert one language to another language okay so in that case we need to do the this uh, part of uh, we need to remove and we need to add up the image part so here i add up all this okay so same time we need to take the image and we need to use the language model to produce the sentence for the particular image that we want so for that uh, we already have a data set coco data set common object uh, in context data set which have a lot of images with it and with the caption together so uh, so far we have seen this how to go with movie review then this is the language model and this is our required model for image captioning so let me take you here there Okay. Okay, fine. So uh, this is uh, going to be very uh, you know uh, big one because here you can see uh, we need to process the image. We need to run uh, the decoder as well. Okay, uh, because this and this together will run. So what we have with us, we have with us images and their captions. So the images will be created here. and the caption of the image will be fitted here okay and whatever you get as a features or output from this model will be fitted here and then this model will tune to predict the caption for the particular image okay so that is depend on uh, what object you have in that particular image so let's see so yeah so uh, this is all about how to you know uh, go with uh, this uh, let me take you one more example here yeah so i hope this is fine so yeah okay so this is the model and this is how to load all these codes and all so uh, you know uh, this uh, data set is very big and it required 19 gb space so don't worry it will take time but it will you know download it here and it will run it you can see here i have a 70 gb free space so 19 gb is not a big for me because i have a space 70 gb so we download all the training and testing and annotation data fine then here uh, this is uh, the function how to you know uh, load the images and how to show it so this is a simple function because your images are 3d images and they have a three dimension there we need to you know uh, convert into um, as i told you because uh, in in images we have uh, rgb and we have a range rgb from 0 to 255 and we need to normalize it so this all jobs is done here in the load image so you can see this like this okay so this is simple step do you should search this is uh, to show the images and uh, here you can see so uh, this is a one image here you have giraffe trees and forest and the data set of coco have uh, multiple annotation for a single image okay so for the single image you have 1 2 3 4 uh, different uh, predictions or captions but uh, when we do experiment we only take one of them because we cannot go with the multiple uh, sentences 
So as I told you that uh, we will use this VG16 model. I hope you are aware about it. So like AlexNet, uh, like same, uh, you have VG16 model to process an image. And everything is set up already here. So we can skip all these things. <laughs> and how to process it? How to process images which are written here? So let me just skip all these things. Now uh, this is tokenizer. So uh, this is about how to process the image. Okay, that part we have done, and uh, there will be CNN part. The next is tokenizer. So uh, as we just uh, uh, you know. Uh, Covered in the uh, this movie review, please mute yourself. So, so here you can see again uh, we need to do uh, process the text. So, uh, please uh, mute yourself if somebody not muted yourself. So, uh, these are the caption and all. So same thing will be happen again. We need to take all the uh, uh, these uh, captions. We need to do tokenizer to and we need to do convert them integer and then we need to do embedding. So same step we need to follow here. So that's why I will skip it all such information because we have gone through this tokenizer how we do that uh, in movie review. That's why we taken these examples there. Now this is data generator. And then now we can create a recurrent neural network here. So uh, you can see this uh, is actually the VG16, and that we need to create. So also you can look at all this. So uh, we have taken uh, different different type of uh, layers here. Like we have three layers, GRU layers. And then here we connected them together. So it took different approach in function because uh, we need to run uh, this encoder and decoder together. So that's why we have made a function to run them uh, in the same sequence. So this is the decoder part. And this is the comp uh, you know uh, this uh, compile the model and yeah one more things let me just uh, show you yeah so this is decoded part yeah fine compile it yeah here here we need to do training so decoder training will be happen here now generating the caption So uh, when you run this code, uh, it automatically, you know, uh, you can specify this uh, um, function uh, will, you know, take any kind of, uh, you know, references for which you want to uh, generate the caption. So you can try this uh, generate function, and you can try to predict the uh, caption for that particular image. Okay. So it will take a lot of time because uh, it need to download 20 GB data and then will train first of all your uh, VG16 and together with the decoder. So it will take a lot of time. And like again, this is generated for that particular image, like a man in a suit and ties standing outside the outside. So it's not uh, that correct, but it's generated like this. Like uh, for this giraffe image, is uh, uh, it's predicted this a giraffe standing in the field next to a tree, okay? And what actually actual actual was this four? So you can see it's different from there. Okay, so this is one more of the sample. Okay, so uh, fine. So this is all about from my side. And thank you uh, very much to be here. Now uh, we have a few time with us uh, to take queries because it's a very long lecture. 
it will be try to you know make it very small but uh, it will be not able to prove to be successful and if you want to you know uh, really interested in phd uh, and you should also contact me uh, in this field like uh, in uh, deep learning problems so basically uh, i actually worked in the deep learning for different different applications so few instances of my working in particular image processing Uh, so much you know working in uh, computer vision especially pathology detection so uh, we actually work uh, in different areas of deep learning thank you so now you can ask me a uh, few questions so i happy to uh, take it and although we have less time but we can take few of them yes please ask the queries sir i want to uh, wish to uh, ask one thing yeah uh, sure the code that you have shown is it uh, there in the help uh, resource yeah, this, help yeah you can find this code on internet uh, although we will provide slide in slide you will get a link and then like you can open it okay okay it will be so better if you put uh, share that link uh, in the chat box so that we can yeah. go through it once again and uh, re it uh, means revisit the things again sure yeah sure yeah uh, i have already built the link of every code with the slides in the within the slides so when you go to look at the slides you will find the link as well and all uh, code are in shareable mode so when you click and you can directly jump to the code. Fine. And I'll I'll okay, share so the slides with you. Thank you. Once you have. So we will be getting the this slides also. Yeah, the slides will be provided by Anil sir. Thank soon. you. Right, sir. So I'll do that. Once I'll receive, I will definitely uh, provide to everyone. Uh, sure. So another thing, uh, as you uh, were saying, uh, there are some PhD opening in your uh, institute also. So some yeah. of my students are interested in doing that. so could you please uh, uh, explain a little bit about the uh, the fee structure and the timeline and yeah yeah yeah. yeah for yeah for that uh, please visit our website uh, manipal university jaipur yeah, fees is available is 25000 per year so fees is available and yeah, that would uh, be fine thank you sir thank you yeah so you also you can visit uh, manipal uh, jaipur no. website for phd purpose thank you uh you have a, in your institute you have a postdoc no we don't have sorry for that please ask the question related to the session after that we can yeah. once is sure. recording we can ask the questions that uh, yes please regarding session if you have any kind of query please ask hello sir uh, yeah what, what is the function of the tokenizer here you have used that kindly can you say it yeah 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 so the when we have a words with us when we have sentences with us we cannot produce you know feed them directly to the neural network we need to convert them into numbers i hope uh, you missed that particular uh, slide so i told you that we have words with us Uh, like in movie review, uh, we have a review with us. Like this is the good movie, but we cannot feed it. We need to convert these words into numbers. So tokenizer does that job. Are you getting it? Yes, yes. But that uh, that portion of your uh, logical code uh, uh, can we get from uh, the any sources of internet? Yeah, uh, sure. No, no, no. Fine. Uh, um, this is already, you know, uh, part of Keras library. We just need to call the tokenizer function, which I already included in my code. When you get the code, definitely you will get a function as well. Is it open sourcely available? Yeah, yeah. It's open sourcely available. Keras library have already built this code, and this also used in my code. Let me just show you once again. so that uh, you can uh, you know uh, get the feel it so uh, this was a movie review and here you can see that part this is the function 
let me just take you there yeah this organizer function is there so let me just take you in upper side so initially you can understand it uh, yeah here we downloaded the code uh, data set and then we performed organizer here so you can see this is a function this is pre-built pre -built function okay and that pre-built pre function uh, you know first of all look at the uh, you know wor words you have in your dictionary and it will number them and after that it will convert your sentences what are, what into are words. These values, sir? sir one minute what are those yeah, yeah. values beside these are these letter yeah, all yeah, yeah. the words have some values what are what are those yeah, yeah. Sir, one? these are these, these are the indexes only these are the indexes sir p9069 suppose you have a five words with you suppose you have five words with you okay oh. so how, how you can number you can give first word one then two then three then four in same okay. manner it has given okay then then according to that like i represent index 10 was represent 13 is has converted into the numbers so your words converted into numbers okay then then we go for embedding because you can see there is a big difference between the numbers like you have seven eight 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 seven thousand and two still they are not uniform okay so we need to do encoding so that also um, you know will in function uh, in uh, keras so let me take you there uh, this yeah this is the was mapping and then here you can see this embedding so this embedding will automatically again convert integer into a vector of 8 length of 10 length here in my case it is 8 length so sir embedding means uh, which type of any data are you embedding here or any yeah uh, these let me just show you these these values these values going to embed because if i feed this value into the neural network and as I already told you, when we put data into neural network, value should be in the range of 0 to 1. But it, okay. this is not into 0 to 1. So we need to convert these values in uniform uh, range. That's why we need to apply embedding so that we can get a uh, vector in the range of 0 to 1. Fine? 0 to 1. Okay. 0 to 1. I hope I'm, I'm clear. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, any other any, query? Yeah, any, anyone that having any query, you can ask me. Okay. Okay, so I think we can conclude the session. Yes. So, yeah, so thank you very much, um, especially uh, Anilji, to invite me here and to share my thoughts uh, with all the participants. And I wish all the participants to have a good health. And although uh, the COVID effect is going down now, and we are in all in a good you know, level now. And again, we start learning and keep learning. Thank you. And thanks to, uh, to you, sir, also. And this is also this is all due to our department and the college you know, efforts through which we can organize this Atal FDP. And uh, we can call you all here in this platform and uh, uh, you have delivered such a nice session on this topic. And we, we would like to thank you on this. And I would like to uh, call everyone to please turn their video on so that we can take a picture. Sir, uh, you can remain for a while yeah. over here. I just wanted to stop the recording first then. Uh,